Settlers of Kalgor has now been live for 48 hours, and I got to say, I'm having a blast. We are just about getting into map. Actually, we just started maps, so my character progression is progressing nicely. But I wanted to create this video because I made a couple of mistakes when it comes to the new mechanics in Settlers of Kalgor League in reference to the town mechanics, how to ramp it up, what to do and specifically the shipping and i wanted to get this out and make sure you guys don't make the same mistake now these are very simple i would say introductory mistakes to avoid so if you're looking for a more advanced version let's say you're further into the game let's say you've ranked up your town to the max and you're in that territory then this video is probably not for you however you're more than likely to watch so i want to get into a couple of mistakes that i made i want to share it with you and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes if you are yet to even start playing the new league i know a lot of people were working on the weekend and so they didn't have an opportunity to grind as much as they wanted to so this video is for you but before we get there I want to say that a lot of you continue to watch my content, but yet do not subscribe. If you can hit that subscribe button, I would really appreciate the support of my content. Thank you. Okay, so let's get into the mistakes I made and how you can avoid them. Okay, so you're in King's March. Now you can go and check out, obviously, through the mini map. But if you notice right above your skill hotbar here on the right, there is a town map which will give you the lay of the land. And hold on, before I even go there, my first step is as soon as you start playing 3.25, the new league, go to the King's March as soon as the first quest comes up. That's my very first step. Do not ignore it and just level up and concentrate on going through the campaign. You wanna get in here, uh, follow the quest, do what they tell you to do, and start getting your town, building your town, hiring people. It's the biggest thing. You got to start ramping up your town. Okay, so there's a town map, which you can go here. And this is your town resources. It tells you as you ramp up the rank, you can populate more people in the town to work for you. So right now I'm at 35. And this is your treasury gold. So you need to invest in the town in order for it to grow. And what growing means is upgrading everything, hiring people. Um, and it's very simple. You just come to add and the gold, the in-game gold that we now earn in the game just by grinding the game, doing the campaign, doing the maps, just playing the game you get gold so please make sure you're always topping it up like you can see myself i'm going through a little thing with my character right now but that's for another video um but and it will also tell you when your treasury is empty in other words when the town runs out of money guess what happens it shuts down doesn't operate everything halts all the mining all the farming all the smelting, all the sh shipments, everything halts. So always, always make sure that you have gold and that you're constantly adding gold to the treasury. So it's your town is always operating. Now, my treasury will be empty in two hours and 13 minutes. Now, remember, one of the things we learned with 3.25 when it was being introduced to us was that the town mechanic operates even when you're not in game so when you're sleeping at night these guys are working hard for you so remember that and that's the beauty of always keeping track of your treasury so and it tells you when it's going to run out and then it just lists all the resources so here is the town resource panel and it also these are all the people that you have hired and really and all the ones that are you. idling and how many you can have and then you have basically the lay of the land 
And here you have the farming. As you can see, I've rank four farming. I've rank five mining. I have rank five shipping. I just literally started to dis dischanter. So it is only rank two, sorry, rank one. And this is a rank, uh, rank five that it's gonna get ranked up to. So this is the lay of the land and you can actually click it and it'll show you what the resource is. So these are farming plots and how many workers I have working in each spot. And it tells you what they're farming. So wheat, pumpkin, corn, and wheat. And the same thing, you can do this all the way around and it'll tell you how many people you have assigned for each resource. Okay, this is mining. And as you can see, here's one of my ships that is actually, it's at dock. I got the alert. Um, so we're going to go check that out. And then this is the smelting. And again, these are all the different ores that you can smelt. So this will give you a quick overview. So number one, get to the town as soon as you start playing the new league and get it up and running. Number two, make sure you always have gold in here so your treasury doesn't run out and it doesn't shut down the town because then nothing is happening, nothing is progressing. Okay, then what, when you come in here, this is Johan who is, again, take you to this tab and this is where some of the quests will get done. Here's where you upgrade your town. And as you can see, upgrade to rank six and it'll list on the right side what it can do. And then you got Ralph, who is the town recruiter. And again, he'll have everybody that's available to hire. It'll show you the cost in gold and how much they make per hour. And then it shows you what skill set they have so for example a gate here is a rank five sh sh he can ship so he'll be on your boat on your ship and it's a rank five rank four this guy is a miner and a farmer so dual okay but he's 119 dollars an hour this guy is a rank three and i believe they go from i've the highest i've seen is rank five uh, so rank one to rank five. I don't know if there are any higher. This is a rank two smelter. Anyway, you can see and hire accordingly. Now, if you're looking for a specific type, let's see where, let's say we needed someone to farm a farm plot. Well, well, okay. We do have a farmer here. Let's say this Clovis guy wasn't here. All you need to do is reroll the recruits but it costs you 500 gold. Now be very careful with this. If you have a lot of gold, then you're good. I've re-rolled a couple of times because I was swimming in gold, but as you can see, I've sucked that up. Um, uh, it's all gone now. That's another mistake that I made. Be very mindful of your gold. Use it wisely. Remember, we can, always, we can also use it to respec our skills these guys now i have yet to respect using gold so i don't know the cost associated to it but i just want you to be aware of it so we have the town recruiter which again he has the work the workers that are available to be hired and you just hire them and then what you do we'll go over to my farming plot just again this is basic stuff guys so let's say you go to the farming plot and there's three workers that are be available. These are all the workers that you have. You just assign them. They'll move over here and Bob's your uncle. Okay, so you assign people to the work. Now, there are a couple of more things that I want to show you when it comes to workers. Number one, how would you fire a worker? And number two, what is the impact to our town wage, hourly wage as a whole when it comes to our workers? If they're assigned or idle, is there an impact? So first you come to Ralph, the recruiter. And as you can see, we discussed the left panel already. On the right panel is your current workers. And this will show you all the workers you have, how many you have. So I have 30, but I could have 35, but I've only hired 30. 
and these are all my workers. Now, if you only want to show the idling workers, you can just tick this box. It'll show you the idle only workers. But my reason why I want to come here is this is where you would fire your workers. It's this little icon on the right. So you would come to this panel and you could release and fire a worker. This is where you would do that. Now, when it comes to assigning workers and am I saving by not, by keeping them idle. So as you can see here, I have four workers working on Orichalcum and Petrified Amber Ore. There's nothing happening with Crimson Ore and there's nothing happening with Bismuth Ore. Now, by the way, when it comes to the ore, guys, remember, do not ignore all the ore looting that happens during the during the campaign and during mapping. They're going to spawn all over during our gameplay. And that is how you funnel ore into your town in order for it to be mine. So do not, do not pass by it without getting the ore. Obviously, depending on what type of ore it is, it is obviously the more difficult or rare the ore, the higher the level of difficulty the enemies that spawn. So do not do not negate these encounters while you're grinding, leveling up, campaign, mapping, etc. etc. That feeds your mining. So you always want to have the ore coming in so your workers can mine it. Okay, so we have four. Man, we have four out of the nine workers right now that are mining. As you can see, my hourly wage is 992. Now, if I assign a fifth person, will it impact my hourly wage, 992? Now, if I put them on crimson ore, there's nothing to mine here. So let's go here. We'll assign someone. And we'll put them on crimson. Oh, it already went there. I already have a guy on crimson. Okay. So we assigned a fifth worker. Now, as you can see, he is here, but there's no crimson iron ore to mine, but we've assigned him. And as you can see, it impacts the hourly wage of our town. So even though our cavalier is assigned his $15 an hour gets put on to our town, even though he physically isn't working. So keep that in mind and manage. So let's see, it's 1,007 right now. Let's remove Mr. Cavalier. Okay, so the work is still being done. And as you can see, it's not drop back down to 992. So keeping your workers idle actually saves you your hourly gold increase in the wages that your town consumes. So bear, be very mindful. As you can see, I have two people on petrified when really 15, this guy's seven, I'll remove him. I'm trying to keep my costs down low. So remember that it does impact the amount of gold you're burning. Also, what is another thing that you need to pay attention to when it comes to workers is rank. Okay, these are all rank one guys, but I have rank two miners. And what that should that would do is it will look at this. So production rate 114 per hour. 40 so what is this or calcium 114 right so i got a level one and a level one on or calcium and it's 114 or per hour okay remember that 114 so our cavalier is actually a rank two miner and so is rolt so we're going to take out these rank one which we're going to be 114 and we're going to put two rank twos on what was it or a calcium right so where is he he's right here we'll put him on or a calcium and rank two or a calcium boom and these guys are now 171 per hour so you notice 
drastically improving the production rate with the ranks. So pay attention to the ranks. It cuts down the processing time and it increases the production rate. So pay attention and to keep an eye out on what work needs to be done and assign your workers appropriately. Don't and put the other workers in idle mode and it will drastically decrease your hourly wage burnage of gold. Now, shipping. So I wanna share with you what I know so far. Now remember, I have played since launch now, I didn't grind as much as I wanted to because of IRL, but I do have a lot of time in the game already. Um, so, shipment is in. It sh I got an alert when I was out grinding the game. You'll see a little tag, and I'll try to find uh, a little screenshot of it, and hopefully I can pop it up in the video. If not, you'll know what I mean. It's very obvious. Um, but this means that th the shipment has come. So, we go to shipping and rewards so this is on its return and this is all the loot that i got back okay now again it wasn't a big shipment this is early days for me so as you fulfill the orders in a more fruitful manner the rewards are greater and we're going to get into a little bit of that and i'm going to share with you what i know okay so how do you ship what do you do what do you put into shipment? So basically, when you come in to the shipment, there is going to be different ports. Now, right now, because of my rank, I have these four ports only. Okay. And all you need to do is hover on them. And it's asking you, this is Ribbon Fell. It's only 140 kilometers from our port, from King's March. So it would be a quick turnaround for the shipment to go and then they'll give us resources depending on what we gave them and it'll come back with what you just saw as an example now they're looking for bars and wheat they're looking for bars and corn they're looking for bars and wheat they're looking for bars now it's always better to ship bars than ores so it's it's just significantly better these two are very far and the favor you're getting in return outside of this one isn't really the best although this one does have 60 percent this one has 70 percent and it's a little bit further only another 46 kilometers i believe yeah 46 kilometers so not that great of an increase but you go from 40 percent favor to 70 percent favor with the iron um so the crimson iron so you can select this one okay and then you go to your shipment so now what are you going to put in there so now necessarily not you don't have to fulfill it a hundred percent if you don't have the resources and i do want to say you want to be very careful with just fulfilling these a hundred percent and getting rid of all your resources that's the mistake i made and now i'm in this situation where when it comes to all the bars all the different iron ore bismuth verisium which now make the bar equivalent okay i have basically grinded myself to this position where i don't have as much when i and you need this in order to upgrade the town. So be very mindful and just give them what you can and get as much out of it. You don't want to waste the shipment either. You don't do it just for the sake of doing it. So we go to Crimson. They want 170. I have 176. So this is where you need to make the decision. So maybe what you do is, let's say you go to 70 and what else do they want they want 130 corn now corn i have a ton and as you can see you can see the shipment value and you always 50 percent chance the shipment will be encountered unforeseen outcomes during its voyage the greater the risk the higher chance of more severe outcomes so you can see this 
and the shipment value, okay, you want to be very careful. So do you understand the more you put here, the higher the risk. So the more valuable your shipment is, the more chance it is susceptible to getting um, unforeseen circumstances. And we know what that means, okay? So be mindful of this, although don't let it scare you into not doing anything. Uh, so far, I haven't had anything happen at sea. I've only had the shipment actually at dock. Uh, they lost the shipment at the dock. Uh, and they mentioned something about security. Um, but I'm trying to still figure that one out. So they are asking for 130 corn. So let's let's make them happy. I'm going to give them 350, which is, let's do 390. Okay, 390, which is three times the value of theirs. Okay, and 70 which is going to give them a little bit. So done, set, sail, and it goes. See you later. Hasta la vista. And there will go. They'll be back in 41 minutes. And again, this is the shipping improvements area. So the other tip. So, sorry. So shipping, be very mindful of just dumping everything out what they asked for, giving it 100% and just draining all the resources and then you don't have resources. So everything costs gold, dust, bars, like so all these resources that you're mining, smelting, farming, you also need them to upkeep and upgrade your town. So don't ship them off to someone else be very mindful of that and then the other tip is this disenchanter do not forget this and let it go by the wayside this will all the gear that you're not using it will turn it into dust which you can use so get your stuff that you're not using your equipment, your weapons, all the stuff that drops in game and throw it in here. Now there are a couple of requirements. It's got to be magic or higher. And of course you can't, you can't dump an unidentified item oh, hello there. to it. Okay. Let me get an of that. Okay. It has to be identified. Hi, so no cheapies here. Spend the money. You can't do it. It's cost you one wisdom scroll. Okay. So magic higher obviously has to be identified put it in here they break it down and it's the same thing you put crew members and this is the this guy's a rank three he's expensive 117 an hour but do not negate this don't forget about this guys it's very sensitive the balance and i effed up big time with my town on getting it going first of all I waited probably 45 minutes later to actually go to the town. And then when I started ramping up the town, I just, when, when I started shipping, I was just giving them everything. And now I have to build it back up. So don't make those mistakes. Get in there early and be very mindful of your resources. Make sure you hire the right people. I haven't fired anyone yet. Um, and then always come and look to upgrade when you can. Like, look at here. Look at what I need to have for my next rank up for the whole town. The other tip that I would want to have to you, and of course, now that I'm doing this, there's nothing here. But what you will find is you will have, you will have your workers assigned to a specific ore. In the case of smelting, if you see that petrified amber ore, there's a lot that needs to be smelted and there's nothing else that needs to be smelted, yet you have all your workers distributed on other things that don't require work, make sure you go and it's just a drop down and you put them on petrified amber and then it'll show here three and then all the ore that needs to be smelted quicker, okay? Just keep an eye out on that.
Okay, that's it, everybody. Um, do not make the mistakes that I made. I'm paying for it right now. Now, my town is still ramping up, but I could have been a lot further ahead and also learned more quicker if I hadn't make, made these mistakes because... I was just, yeah, what do they need? Okay, let me get out. And as you can see, I'm out of ore. I'm out of iron and, I'm uh, sorry, bars uh, for my town. So I need to get that replenished as soon as possible. Now, the other thing that I didn't mention when it comes to shipping, there are basically two types of rewards you're going to get. If you're looking for currency, okay all the things we need to um, advance our gear and stuff like that if you're looking for currency type items then you want to do the farming like the wheat the corn the the pumpkin you want to do and trade with those ports because they will send you back resources if you're looking for gear you're looking, and I've heard some people get really lucky and really good gear from these shipments. If you're looking for gear type, weapon type rewards from your shipments, that's where you want to get into the ores and the irons. I'm sorry, the bars. Um, any kind of shipment involving those materials will bring you back if the shipment is successful, if you fulfilled it successful, um, therefore increasing your chances of what you're going to get reward wise then you want to stick with the bars type shipments that will bring you back gear okay so that'll do it if i make any more mistakes i'll let you know and i probably will but i wanted to share this with you so you don't make those mistakes so by the way get into the get into the uh comment section of my video oh and if you can like the video that would be awesome uh, and let me know how your King's March town is doing. How is your, what is your impression of the settlers of Calgore? What do you think? Are you liking it? I'm hearing nothing but good things. I love this mechanic. This brings such a good mix to the whole gameplay cycle in Path of Exile, where you, you know, you can kind of, Get away from grinding, whether you're campaign or map blasting or, or whatever. Come in here, take care of business, or you get the alert that your shipment has arrived. So you come to town and you're all excited. You get that dopamine hit. Oh my God, oh my God. Well, like Hopefully the shipment, what am I going to get? What am I going to get? Am I going to get something Gucci? You know what I mean? It just, and you got to work, or, like it, it, it provides a little sidestep of entertainment and dopamine hit. Um, with the grindiness of the game with any ARPG, there's grind, but I think it's such a beautiful addition. Well done. GGG. Unbelievable. 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 Anyway, let me know what you think. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.